Good evening, I'm Molly O'Brien and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the big seven stories right now. Topping the list, an epic day on the calendar is just hours away. The third Saturday in October and once again, the Tennessee Volunteers are facing the Alabama Crimson Tide. It's not just fans in for the game tomorrow. The SEC Nation team is on campus for game day. The game between these bitter rivals has always been a big one. However, this year the stakes are higher with both teams having one loss. Ryan McGee says this game is an elimination game of sorts for both schools in this era of a 12 team playoff. It's not all about football though for McGee. He says hosting Marty and McGee with Marty Smith on UT's campus is a homecoming for him. He told us some of his memories being back on campus with the show. Doing the show on the hill for me is the most, it almost makes me want to cry. It's the most, it's, it's an out of body experience that is hard to explain. It's a moment that I think about my dad sitting at home watching it on Saturday morning. I think about, I was, I got a classmate of mine walking around with me right now. I think about the kid that walked around here not knowing what was going on to being able to sit on the hill where I, got, I was escorted off the top of Ayers Hall by campus police as a freshman because I climbed my way up there. Neyland Stadium when the orange and white nation really gets cranked up. Tim Tebow has played in the hostile environment that is Neyland Stadium and said it's his favorite to play in because of the passionate fans. He talked about how loud it needs to be this weekend. It's really fun. It's one of my favorite stadiums to play in. It is loud. I mean, it's Rocky Top all the time. <laughs> I'm going to show a, a tape tomorrow of on, I believe, 3rd and 12 with like 4.50 to play last week against Florida. When you watch the coaches film in the end zone copy, the stadium's so loud that the camera that's filming it, it's blurry. You can almost can't even watch the film because it's shaking so much. Marty and McGee starts at 9 o'clock. SEC Nation follows at 10. If you're going to the game, remember it's an orange out, so be sure to wear orange. If you can't get inside Neelan, UT is hosting a watch party at Ball Village in Humanities Plaza. The university says it will begin at noon and end when the game is over. Ball Village then opens at noon. The Vol Walk begins at 1.15. Gates to Neelan open at 1.30. The Pride of the Southland Band marches at 1.50 and kickoff is set for 3.30. And before the watch party starts, you can tune into Channel 6 Saturday morning at 10.30 to catch our Tennessee tailgate show. The sixth sports team will preview the third Saturday in October matchup to get you ready for an action-packed day of football. If you're staying home, we've got you covered as the Vols play Alabama right here on Channel 6. But beforehand, you can watch Miami take on Louisville at noon. And number five, Georgia plays number one, Texas. After the Vols game wraps up, kickoff for that one is set for 730. Again, you can catch all of the action, including the Vols, tomorrow right here on Channel 6. Now to a big shakeup for Knox County Schools. Knox County Schools announcing in the past two hours that its chief of security is leaving the school system. Jason Perriard stepping down to take a position in the private sector. KCS says it will conduct a nationwide search for his replacement. But in the meantime, Rebecca Becky Ruthrich appointed as interim chief of security beginning at the start of November. She currently serves as a manager of discipline and investigations for KCS. Our next big story, another example of heroism coming out of Helene. Lieutenant Danny Reese and Sergeant Dan Williams, both school resource officers in Cock County, are typically in uniform patrolling school grounds in the county, not rescuing people by helicopter like they did on September 27th. The pair of resource officers initially began to assist with patrol when the county began to experience flooding three weeks ago. Later in the evening, the two went up in the helicopter rescuing people. We're told at times the helicopter was unable to find a safe landing zone, so the pilot hovered while the two jumped out to rescue vic victims. We were there, we were throughout the day doing what we could to help. Uh, when we finally got that helicopter from Knox County, um, myself and Lieutenant Reese happened to be 
be right there and we were asked if we'd go in the helicopter and see what we can figure out as far as how to get to places. But once we got going and, and seeing people on rooftops, we just started getting them. In total, the pair of resource officers rescued 24 people. A Tennessee Department of Transportation worker reunited a family with their two dogs that had been lost for several days in the aftermath of Hurricane Helene. Richard McNabb, a TDOT worker in Cock County native, was on the job days after the flooding when he and another worker spotted two dogs on I-40 where part of the roadway had actually been washed away. TDOT wrote on social media that their dog tags helped McNabb return the dogs to their home in Grassy Fork, a town several miles away from where they had been found. We saw these dogs and uh, the little pup was just uh, barking and yapping like crazy and uh, the mom was over in the ditch drinking water and so uh, I, I scooped up the pup and handed him to Willis and uh, went over there and talked to the mama dog here for a minute and she let me get her and, and we put her in the truck. The mama and little puppy were gone and the other four puppies were all at home so uh, we began uh, searching for them and trying to figure out where they went and that went on for about a week before uh, Richard called us and let us know uh, that he had found them. So we were really glad about that. Ash Ford, who you just heard from, told Six News that the lack of cell service in the area made it difficult for McNabb to contact him and let him know where the dogs were found. His daughter. In continuing coverage of the big relief effort after Helene, today marks three weeks since the storm's remnants brought catastrophic flooding to parts of western North Carolina and right here in East Tennessee. The Federal Emergency Management Agency sent out an update this afternoon on the amount of help coming from that agency so far. FEMA says it has approved more than $12.8 million in assistance for more than 2,800 Tennessee households. That's for the eight East Tennessee counties under the federal major disaster declaration. Carter, Cock, Green, Hamlin, Hawkins, Johnson, Unicoi, and Washington counties. Now, speaking of Washington County, that's one of the places where FEMA teams are helping more people apply and register for disaster aid. We've shown you the site, a place called Fender's Farm in Jonesboro, where FEMA specialists are set up from two to seven each day, taking people through the application process. FEMA says the teams will be there every day until further notice. And new help tonight, the state announcing it will provide one-time emergency cash assistance to qualifying families impacted by Helene. That's including those in Cock, Green, and Hamblin counties. The program will provide a one-time payment of $500 for households of up to two people, $750 for households of three to four people, and $1,000 for households of five people or more. The state says both SNAP and and TANF recipients as impacted counties will automatically receive this emergency cash assistance. Other people who live or work in impacted counties can apply for assistance as well. However, there is a list of qualifications you'll have to meet. Also today, FEMA has a message for people who are not approved for disaster and disaster aid right away, not to give up. The agency says people might be getting letters back about their applications, denying the request, or asking for more information. Some of the reasons why, maybe you're missing some of the required documents. If that's the case, FEMA wants you to let them know. Also, FEMA's help can not double up with help you might be getting from insurance or from state or local programs. Now, that's just a few of a bunch of the possibilities, but whatever the reason, remember you have the right to appeal, whether that's the overall decision or the amount FEMA approves. That's one of the reasons you might choose to visit a recovery center like the one in Washington County. You can also find more information through FEMA's website, disasterassistance.gov, through the FEMA app, or the FEMA helpline. That number's on your screen. It's 1-800-621-3362. And if you want to help, Six News is working with the East Tennessee Foundation to collect money for its neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor disaster relief fund. If you'd like to make a donation, you can scan this QR code. The money will help provide shelter, medical care, food, and other basic needs for people who were directly impacted by the floods. 
And we're wrapping up with a big challenge for an industry most of us take for granted. According to a recent study at the University of Tennessee, dairy farms have seen a 95% decline since 1970. And today there are only 125 left in the state. With high cost of production and low milk sales, many farmers had to leave the industry, but others learned how to adapt for Sweetwater Valley Farms. They say diversification has been key in keeping their business running, like selling cheese, making their own feed, and investing in newer technology. If you look back at the last 20 years, farms that have not been able to grow, whether that's because of a land base or um, or for whatever reasons that you basically can't stay alive. You know, you have we have a saying in the dairy industry, if you're not growing, um, you're gonna be out. It's just a matter of time. Like many dairy farms left in the area, they are a family business and they say one of the reasons they stick with it is tradition, which is why they stress the importance of buying your dairy locally and supporting small businesses.